Solving this problem is going to be requiring a bit of a different mindset. Amazon really likes to give this binary search. I see a lot of problems given by Amazon that require you to know the binary search algorithm. So what's the philosophy around it? I have five elements, I'm taking the half, then I'm decreasing this, dropping this range. I do have three now, then I choose this, dropping that range, and I'm dropping every single time half of my ranges. That's why it's called binary, I'm always dividing by two. Greetings everyone, today we're doing problem 69 squared x. This is a problem given by Amazon in a coding interview. Today we're going to be coding this in JavaScript, so let's go ahead and see a solution. First, of course, we're going to read it and then we're going to think about it. Finally, we're going to code. Given a non-negative integer x, compute and return the square root of x. Since the return type is an integer, the decimal digits are truncated and only the integer part of the result is returned. Note, you're not allowed to use any libraries. Yeah, definitely, because that is what is going to allow us to actually perform the algorithm. Now, I do have a couple of examples. I do always pass between these, just so I can explain. And here, there's one ingenious thing that I like to talk about. And by the way, I think that I forgot to mention it in the c -sharp video, but if I go down, you're going to see the related topics, and you're going to see binary search over here. So you can always go ahead and ask the interviewer, all right, what related topics am I supposed to be looking at if you cannot find a solution, if you want a hint? Obviously, you have a couple of hints. Haven't read them. Try exploring O integers. That's a shit hint. Use the stored sorted property of integers to reduce the search space. Now, that is a good hint. So this is actually the hint that is uh, genius, really. Use the sorted property of integers. What does it mean? Now, if you do not understand what it means, it means that if I have, let's say, number 20... Actually, I'm going to use my current subscribers because that's going to be fun. So you guys are 89 currently at this moment. Now, if I take this 89 and divide it by 2, so I go down over there, right? Let's say that here is the 0 and I am climbing up to 89. So please subscribe and let's make this number 100 million thousand whatever number it is. So 100 million. Yeah, I like, I like that. Now, I'm going to get 40. Well, that's a shit calculation. 49.5, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see that this number is actually less than my current subscribers, right? I can say the word. It's no problem. Now, what this means is that every single time that I'm taking a number out of this number over here, I'm going to get a digit that's going to be less. And that's pretty obvious if you actually write them down. In order for me to get to 89, I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and all the way to 89. So this is what we call sorted property of integers. Now, keep in mind, I'm taking a number, let's say 4 here, and this 4 is guaranteed to have less here and more here. Meaning that if I have this number here, 5, this is going to be a bigger digit than the current digit on the left side. And same with obviously three, two, and one. That's pretty much it. If you understand that, then you are able to perform binary search. Binary search, we usually put into an array and one note where we actually cannot perform binary search. So when we cannot perform binary search, we have something like this. One, three, six, two, zero, oh, and one. Now, in order for us to perform binary search, first we need to sort it. The sorted version is going to be 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 6. And here you can see that if I take this number, for example, I'm guaranteed that on my left, I'm going to have numbers that are either equal or less of a size than this. And on the right, I'm going to have the bigger numbers. Currently, however, on this, without having it sorted, if I take the 6, nothing guarantees me that on the right I'm going to have bigger numbers and on the left I'm going to have smaller. As you can see, that is definitely not the case. So in order to perform binary search, you obviously need to sort. You obviously need to sort. And integers are, by definition, in mathematics, sorted. So let's actually see how is this performing in code. Now I'm going to go to this function here that they provide us. And the first thing that I want to check is to see if the current number, so x, and actually I'm going to change that because I'm gonna, I don't like x, current number. 
or number inside. Yeah, current number is going to be good. Now, if the current number is actually going to be equal to 1, I'm going to be returning 1. If you think about it, 1 is the only number that's going to be returning 1 having it squared. So that's why I'm not going to perform any other checks. In order to perform the binary search, we have either low and high or left and right. Some people like to do left and right. And I think actually I did in the C-sharp video low and high. And that's why I'm going to do left and right here. Because it's pretty much the same thing. It's just name. Let right going to be equal to our current number. We want the left side to be equal to the starting position and the right side to be equal to the end. So we can have an intervals. And then I'm going to say previous best. I'm going to choose previous best because nothing really says that if I find a number, it's going to be this number. I want to continue going until I'm having no other numbers to try, really. If low is less than high, now I'm going to perform the binary search. We said that in binary search, we're actually dividing the, the array or whatever we have in two. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say mid is going to be equal to pass int since I'm searching for integers of low plus high, and this is going to be divided by two. Obviously, I'm taking the border, I'm dividing by two, and I'm getting the middle element. If my previous best is actually equal to mint, I'm going to be returning previous best. Now, this is an option, because here I might have a couple of numbers that are going to be colliding, and obviously, if I have these numbers, it means that this is going to be the proper result. Now, I am also going to say helper, Let's say helper checker again, and I'm going to provide the middle value and the X and actually current number. And here I think I have, yeah, one more. Now, this is going to check if my current value multiplied by itself is going to be either less or equal than the number that I'm searching for. This is going to mean that it is a proper result, or at least it's on the right track because I want something that's going to be either less or equal, not something bigger. And... If I have this value, I'm just going to continue searching, but I'm going to store it. In order for me to store it, I'm going to say previous best. My best choice is going to be the middle element. And I'm going to say low is going to be equal to mid plus one. Otherwise, I'm going to say high is going to be equal to mid. Now, I'm going to be explaining this. I'm just going to code it here because um, some people want to see just the solution. Other, one, other people want to see the whole explanation of the algorithm. I will be explaining this just in a bit. Now... As soon as I end my while loop, I'm just going to be returning previous best. This is the choice that I stored. And the final thing that I need to do is to create this var helper checker function. This is going to be equal to a function of either fu function of x and y. And these numbers here are going to be current number. And should I say best choice? Let's, let's not make it too complicated. Let's go like that. All right, what I want to do now is to check if x multiplied by x, so this is going to be my mid value, right? If x multiplied by x is less or equal than y, this is going to be the current number. And I want to make sure that x is less or equal than 4, 6, 3, 4, 0. Then I'm going to be returning true. Otherwise, I'm going to be returning false. All right, seems like that should be it. Let's run the code and see if this is going to pass. Problem low is, uh, yeah, I have thought about, <laughs> I was thinking about low and uh, high, but it's left and right. Right, and I did the mistake actually in quite a lot of places. Yeah, I was thinking about, uh, I was thinking about that and that's why I have uh, written it down as low and high because that's what uh, I was thinking about when I explained that we did it in the C-sharp video. All right, good, accept it. Let's pass it to the server and see if this is going to work. And boom, there you go. So this is the solution. If you were only interested into the code, then I hope this was useful for you. Go write it down and see if you can understand it. And for the people who actually need to something to be explained, I'm going to explain like this. So I'm going to collide everything. And now I'm going to draw, and I will be drawing on this side for the binary search and on this side for the helper checker. So the binary search is as following. If I have an array, simply put, I do not have an array now, but I have the same properties as I would if I had an array. Let's 
talk about if I'm searching a number, and this is going to be my search for. So I'm going to be searching for the number, let's say, what is going to be 12. All right. And in the numbers here, I'm going to say one, two, three, four. And I'm going to go all the way to 12. Good. Uh, this is not a good number to search for. Let's search for 11. Good. The first thing that I want to do is to take the middle elements. And I know that this is sorted, which allows me to see, okay, is 6 more or less than 11? It's actually less, meaning that 11 should be on the right side of 6. This is going to allow me to absolutely drop this down and just take this interval over here. And I'm going to have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Keep in mind that the way I'm dropping it is that low is going to be pointing here or left. You know, that's actually right left because in our case we have left. Left is going to be on the left side and right is obviously going to be on the right side. When I want to drop something, I'm basically setting left to be equal to the middle. And now I'm having this array. Currently, left is going to be pointing to 6 and right is going to be pointing to 12. So it's very simple. What I'm going to do now is I'm also going to divide this by 2. This is called binary search. We're always dividing by 2. This is why it's logarithmic. I'm taking 9 and now I can check. All right, is 11 bigger than 9? It is, meaning that it should be on the right side of 9 because I know that this is sorted. Again, I'm setting left to be equal to 10 here or 9. As I said, we are setting it equal to the middle. It doesn't really matter. It's the same logic. And currently, I have this interval. Good, we're getting somewhere. Now I'm going to be checking, all right, the middle element is going to be 10. Is 10 bigger or smaller than 11? It's actually bigger, meaning that I need to look at the right side again. Left is going to be pointing to 10. Right is going to be pointing to 12. And I'm going to have this interval, 10, 11, 12. Finally, I'm going to be taking here, the mid 11, and I'm going to see, all right, this is exactly what I was looking for. So just return this position. Now you can see that we have one, two, three, four iterations for searching 11 numbers. If I want to search 11 numbers as the proper way, uh, the linear way, I need to have 11 iterations. And I'm going to show you why. Let me just write it down. So I'm going to go again all the way to 12. And I'm going to do it as following. Is the first number equal or not to 11? It's not. Let's move forward. Is it equal? I'm going to ask the same question. As soon as I get to 11, I'm going to return. Oh, OK. There we go. It's equal. I'm going to return this either index or number, it doesn't matter. This is going to be linear here, and it's going to be costing me 11 iterations. And this here is going to be log n, and it's going to be costing me, as we saw, four iterations. That's what makes it faster and more beneficial. The helper checker function is actually pretty simple. Nothing very difficult here. Integer has a border, so I think we can go two point something billion. So let's say two billion. And this number over here, 46340 oh, multiplied by itself, right, gives you 2 billion and something. So it's very close to the border. You need to be careful not to overflow. That's why I'm checking it over here. And also, how do I know if the number is going to be returning true? Well, I want to know if 2, so we're talking about this, oops, about this specific thing over here. I want to know if I'm searching for 16, that 4 multiplied by itself is going to be equal to 16. This is going to be the valid answer if I'm searching for square root of 16. And that's why here I'm returning true. Otherwise, I'm just returning false. If it's a bigger number, it definitely cannot be what we're searching for because an int cannot be bigger than 2 billion. That's pretty much it. It's very ugly. But one thing that's left to write is that our time complexity is going to be again. And I do hope that you understand this now. And our space complexity, since we do not do anything, is going to be constant. And here we have one O. Oh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.